set for our middleweight feature fight of the evening. Hector Macho Camacho, the former five-time world champion, takes on Frank Hauk. Hauk is a pretty good uh, veteran himself. He has uh, something over 80 professional fights, so he's looking forward because he lost one time to Hector Camacho by getting clipped and uh, getting seven stitches, so he wants this one bad. And here comes Frank Hulk, about ready to make his way out. He comes in 64 and 17. Only 18 knockouts. He hails from Greensburg, Indiana, which is about an hour from uh, Indianapolis. This guy has fought some pretty good guys, David. I mean, he fought uh, Chavez, Melvin Taylor, uh, Atke Ertel, and Joey Gamash, guys of that nature. Joey Gamash on the road, you know? But there was something special about the Camacho invitation that brought him out. He was done. He's uh, Actually working in the hotel business, but here he is. He said, you know, he's only coming out for one shot only to get back at Camacho <laughs> for, the, a, for the first fight. A real nice kid. He works actually for the Wyndham Garden Hotel in Indianapolis, and our home away from home is the, the Wyndham Hotel at Bonaventure here, so we'll give him a little plug for his hotel. He's been training for four weeks. He's been sparring for two weeks for this fight, and the only reason he came out of retirement at age 39 is because he said if he could beat Camacho, his whole career would be made. For Hector Camacho, on the other hand, it's a different kettle of fish. At 41 years of age, how much has he got left? Well, he certainly isn't going to have the, the speed that he had when he was in his prime. But for him, he wants to have a showing because he told me, he said, you know, I really miss the fame. I miss the money. I miss all the notoriety I got when I was champ. And I want to fight Julio Cesar Chavez one more time. So i got to beat this guy and look good doing it. You, know, you get a lot of attention when you're fighting. People notice you more. As soon as you're out of there, the further you get away from it, uh, it's not what you want. You don't get that attention. You don't get that limelight. Now, you know, he's only looked like a shell of himself in some former fights. The question is, what's out there for him? And even beyond all that, but beyond about what he wants to prove and everything, the guy needs a stage. Well, Hector Camacho has always been a flashy fighter. Uh, his career has spanned three decades. He has wins over Roberto Duran, Sugar Ray Leonard, Greg Hogan, Vinny Pazienza, Howard Davis, Ray Mancini, Edwin Rosario, and you can go on and on and on for the five world titles. He's probably uh, cinched to be in the Hall of Fame someday. Uh, he's, uh, maybe it's a blast from the past, but at age 41, I want to see him, and I hope you people that are tuned in tonight around the country and around the world will enjoy seeing this guy who was one of the flashiest guys. I think Mark Goldberg said at the top of the show, the best self-promoter in the history of boxing was Muhammad Ali, and this guy wouldn't be too far behind in the lesser weight that fight. Hector Macho Camacho comes in here with 76 victories, only five losses in his entire career, and listen to the guys he lost to. Julio Cesar Chavez, Felix Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya in that tough fight with Greg Haugen, uh, three of the great world champions of all time, including himself. Yeah, he's always in there with tough guys. He fought uh, tough people uh, in his era. All right, we're just about set for our national anthem, so let's go up for the introduction to our man in the ring, our ring announcer, the terrific Damian Pinto. Here's Damian. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before we get things started, let me introduce to you, joining us in honoring the United States of America are the Seminole Indian Tribe Color Guard Veterans. And accompanying them to sing our national anthem, one of the members of the Seminole Indian Tribe. How about a big round of applause and welcome Mr. Spencer Batiste.
Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, fight fans. Here we go with our main event of the evening, all brought to you by Warriors Boxing Promotions Incorporated in association with the Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. It is macho time at the Creek, live professional boxing, coming to you from the beautiful Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is under the sanctioning body of the Florida State Boxing Commission. Your chairman, Eduardo La Casa. Commissioners Don Bowen, Barbara Aguirre, Dr. Donald Perry, and Elvin Enton. Your executive director is Chris Meffer. All bouts scored tonight are on a 10-point must system, and the three knockdown rule is in effect. Ladies and gentlemen, your attending ringside physicians, Dr. Stanley Simpson and Dr. Alan Fields. Your judges at ringside this evening, Michael Pernick, Bill Ray, Mark Streisand, and Peter Trematera. Your timekeeper at the bell, Carmine Chilechella, and the man in charge of the action when the bell rings, keeping order in the square circle, referee Armando Garcia. All right, fight fans, here we go with the main event of the evening, Coconut Creek. Are you ready? Introducing first fighting tonight on the blue corner. He weighed in at 155 fighting pounds. He hails from Greensburg, Indiana, with a professional record of 64 victories, 17 losses, and 18 of those victories coming by way of knockout, ladies and gentlemen. Introducing, wearing the black and white, and tonight, fighting from the blue corner, I give you Craig, the golden boy. His opponent stands opposite in the corner to my left, a man who needs no introduction in the boxing world. Hailing from Bayamo, Puerto Rico, and weighing in at 161 fighting pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, this legend takes a 76 victory, five defeats, two draw record into the ring this evening. He has 37 victories by way of knockout. His career has spanned over three decades in the world of professional boxing, and his journey has seen him make his way through six different weight classes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the former five-time world champion, Coconut Creek, I give to you Hector Macho Camacho. Armando Garcia, last minute instructions, 10 rounds, middleweights. Hector Craig, we spoke in the dressing room. Obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. These are a little tied up here. I'll accept punches here, nothing lower. These are a little high, not too low, okay? Good luck, touch gloves, may the best man win. All right, so we're all set to go. We'll take a quick look at the tail of the tape, and David, it'll tell us uh, the big statistic is the age of Hector Macho Camacho. It certainly will. Age difference, uh, not that significant, but 41 for Camacho, 39 for Craig Halkin. You look at it right there, the height, pretty much the same. The big number there, along with the age, the reach for Hector Camacho, five inches, and uh, we'll see what kind of foot speed he has, uh, what, uh, what's there. All right, well, we can't expect to see the guy that we knew uh, right seven, here. eight, ten years ago, but right Macho Camacho is a colorful guy, and we look to see what he has because we know for him it's a big uh, opportunity if he can pull off a win tonight, and he should start fast because one thing he doesn't want to do is get this thing to drag into four, five, six, seven rounds, and he said he would start fast, so let's see what the southpaw can do. Former five-time world champ just taps with that uh, left hand, and he goes headhunting right away with the straight left hand down the middle. Happy with his right hand, the southpaw jabs with the course. Hauk a bit tentative here in the early going, isn't he? And you know, when you know that the other guy has been retired and he's only coming out for you, you've got to figure he's not in his best shape and you want to try to take him out of it early. You want to try to take his heart away in the beginning and see if you can keep him from getting into the fight at all. Well, he's come out for all over him and he'd like to finish him off and be good in the first round. Nails him with a left hand shot. Tries to bang him inside, kind of hanging on with the outstretched abs, and Camacho pushes him away, tries to get the crowd into it, now he attacks again. Well, how the way he talked to us yesterday seemed to really want to, uh, you know, change his end of his career, 
I say he defeated this guy. He loads up a cut and heads up and down. And he calls three. it a knockdown. It's up to three and four and five. What a wild take, shot. To take the uh, standing eight cut. Camacho just pouring all over this guy in the first round. He gets damn that wild cut. And Hulk is just letting it play him. And now nothing, we have a fight. Nothing fancy about it. But that changes everything because Camacho is going to lose the first round after winning all but the 10 seconds that they were counting him. Hauk was afraid of Camacho, then he opened up and got rid of that fear, and now Camacho's back on him. Well, Hector has uh, got the left eye of Hauk all puffy and looks like it's about to bleed, and all Hauk can do is just kind of lash out with wild shots and hope he catches Camacho again. Big left hand by Hector inside. That's not his power hand. Or I should say it is his power hand for himself. As he blasts him again with the left hand, tries to catch him inside again. Oh, Hector should come with the uppercut and he bounced that head back. He goes with that left power hand shot again. Blows up the shot and he goes down. And he gets cut pretty good. Bounce up to three and four and five. And his eyes are not clear as he's taking the foot. It's up to seven and eight. He gives him the eight count. He comes forward to Armando Garcia. And here comes Hector to try and finish it off in the first round. 33 seconds to go, he's got the time if he can get them. Hector needs to cover that uppercut, he did inside. They've got the upside arms hooked up with each other. Now Hector knows how to finish, he get him in front of the gap. Listen to the crowd. Well, he brought him in there with that knockdown. Hey, for the 41-year-old former five-time world champ, he's got the crowd rushing here at Coconut Creek. Blood streaming from the nostrils of Craig Houck. And it's a wild show for the three minutes that we've seen. How about that? A knockdown of peace. Dominance by Camacho. Got a little bit of everything. How you doing, buddy? All right? Ladies and gentlemen, an interesting round because uh, people want to, well, how do you score with the two knockdowns? Well, that evens everything up, and then the winner of the round gets 10 points and loses the match. That's what we need to do. Therefore, Hector. Camacho gets the round. Here's the knockdown. How could be dominated by Camacho? Gets nailed here with three straight strong lefts in a row. And this is after he'd had Camacho down. And he says to the referee, I'm all right. But he paid a price for being in the wrong place there. And Camacho nailing him three times. One good shot here. It's nailed on the inside by Camacho. But he lands a left hand. And Camacho stumbles. And hits the ground, and it's a knockdown. He walked into one, so one apiece, but Camacho on the verge of winning the fight. All right, here's Hector right on top of the guy. He's almost shell shocked as out. You know, for a guy that, as I mentioned before, wanted to finish his career with a victory and only came out of retirement because he was cut up so bad the first time they fought in their primes, by the way. Uh, Greg Hauk looks like a guy that's very, very rich. And Camacho, who, of course, had so much more natural ability as a, uh, you know, a, a time boxer in the middle of his career. He's just really showing his class here on the Greg Hall. When you come out of retirement just to fight one guy and you haven't been training, and the other guy makes you answer a question in the first round about whether or not it was worth it. That's what Camacho was able to do, put that question to how. Well, we had breakfast with uh, Hector this morning, and he said to us, this is going to end as fast as I can end it, because I don't want this guy to drag me in any middle of the late round. And he's trying to end it right here in the second round. Go, punch out of there. Come on. But we wanted to see an entertaining fight. The crowd in attendance loves it. And I know wherever you're watching. And we know at 41, he's only a shadow of his former self fighting against a guy that is just trying to hang in there as best he can. But it is entertaining. I have to say that. It is action. And he's been in a little bit of trouble, which makes it more interesting, too. A few years ago, Al Bernstein, and I think Dave, you were on the telecast with us. Al and I were doing the fight when he fought Roberto Duran. And it got real because they both had similar ability. It gets sloppy towards the middle round. And said, well, Al, it's pretty interesting to consider who we're watching. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> so thanks for making me look good, Al. <laughs> but I'm a big fight fan. And uh, watching come out is always fun. This is round number two with a minute and 12 seconds to go. Camacho tries to load up shots here. They both hang on with that. I call it off arm since we have the right handed guy against the southpaw. Camacho with the fancy trunks, as you know, and the black and white trunks is Greg Hout. Hout, well, they look very amateurish here. Had over 80 professional fights, 64 and 17, only 18 knockouts, but I mean, that's a lot of fights. It's a different circuit. He had a lot of fights.
Jackson hung in there quite a long time. And at 39, he's been back for a long throw, and he's paying for it in there right now. But he got clipped with a pretty good do? shot there, uh, David, and uh, I don't think Hector realized he hurt him as bad as he did. He got him again. Now Hector's been kind of mercilessly just kind of leaving him alone. He's trying to line up the real good power shot. Remember, Bro, the, you're holding him. Punch the power there. comes from the left Still hand. Still punching. And Hawkins hooking him with his own left and leaving the left hand, which is that's probably the smartest thing to do. But remember Hawkins, the first time they fought in the prime of their career, was cut up to the point where they had to stop the fight because he needs seven stitches to end it as we come to the end of the second round. And now he's going to slip by the left eye and it could be in danger to Deja Vu, as they say. The second round. Right, going to the middle of the game. Two rounds in the first time. But Hawkins just getting utilized in that round. It's not matter how. At some point, they're going to say, oh, look, how much more does you want to take? Or you can take your chance. in a fight, it's fast pacing, and against the guy, he should walk through. He had some moments of danger in this fight. He actually was down, he got hit a couple of times. A little bit of a different element. All right, we moved to round three. Now, this is the area that Hector said he wanted to finish this fight off, and he wanted to go beyond three rounds, so let's see if he can finish this guy off. Hector Camacho in the fancy trunks, always the showman. All business right now, though. We're in the third round. Both fighters have been down. Camacho was kind of hit with a uh, line flip and then fell forward. And now down goes Hulk again, and it's all over. The referee, Armando Garcia, said no. You're taking enough headshots, it's all over. And as Hector Camacho wanted to do, ended inside of three, he's done it. It'll be scored as a technical knockout victory by Hector Camacho. So Camacho keeps his string of three fights this year, all wins intact. He goes on now to Mexico City where he tries to work out a television deal with his arch rival from Mexico. You get that great rivalry, even though they're both in the, they're not in the twilight of their career, their careers are over, but it's, uh, they don't have a senior scorer in boxing. But this would be the next best thing to it if Camacho and Julio Cesar Chavez can get together in Mexico City. And hopefully we might even get to see Camacho one more time on Warriors here from Coconut Creek. Well, he did what he wanted in, in getting it done early and not letting a guy who shouldn't be able to hang with him hang with him. And did, came back with some anger after the, the knockdown. And was offensively intact for the fight. All right, uh, Damian Pinto has the official particulars, so we'll get the timing and whatnot and make the fight official by going to our ring announcer. Here's Damian Pinto. Ladies and gentlemen, this one comes to a close at the 25 second mark of round number three. Your winner by knockout, the Macho Man, Hector Macho Camacho. Once again, thanks for coming out to the fights. Like I said before, Bartending career going on, bartending competitions. Hey, he uh, he, he took a lark. And there's Hector Camacho. He's thrilled with himself that he had the victory. Now, as soon as Mark Goldberg can call on this guy, and he's not an easy guy to grab a hold of, we'll throw it up to Mark, and he can talk to Hector Camacho. Camacho. Hector goes and talks to Dr. Fields, and he's got his son in there. And we'll call him in there just a second and uh, get him over to our cameras and uh, have a little chat with the Macho Man. He's playing to the cameras right now. 
And now here we go. Let's throw it up to Mark 